it in. Let it intoxicate your brain, your day, your experience. <laughs> got this burger on my mind, got me on the run. Thinking of a juicy patty on the bun. Milk and cheese on the inside of one of my favorites on the map. Chow it down with a mound of fries. I can't wait to go back. Minneapolis. We're in Minnesota, the land of 10,000 lakes. And although I've clearly found a lake already, it's not what I'm looking for today. I'm looking for the Twin Cities regional specialty, the Juicy Lucy. So what's a Juicy Lucy? It's a cheeseburger of sorts, but instead of the cheese going on top of the patty, it goes in between two thin patties. That means you don't get any cheese on the outside. It all lives inside the burger. So here's what I'm looking for in a good Juicy Lucy. For the bun, I want something simple, nothing special. I want it to be soft, and maybe you can even throw it on the griddle, get a little toast on there. For the meat itself, I need it to be well seasoned, and I want a hard sear on both sides. I also don't want the patty to be thick or too wide. That's gonna mess up the ratio of cheese to meat in each bite. For the cheese, I'm not looking for blue, I'm not looking for brie, nothing fancy. I want American cheese. And when I bite into the sandwich, the cheese should be melty enough to run all over the place. Overall, the ratio of meat, cheese, and bread in the Juicy Lucy should be pretty much even. I've got one day to explore Minneapolis, eat these burgers, and meet up with some friends along the way. I'm gonna get out of this lake and start eating some burgers. BDP, as I've been told, it is called by the locals. This is my first Juicy Lucy of the day. I'm not doing this solo. I need someone to hold my hand through this experience, show me the ropes a little bit. So I've employed my friend Liz, a Minneapolis native, to help me out a little bit. Liz. Do you want to hold hands? Let's it's very hold clammy. I'm nervous. Oh, no, it's good. Okay. We're going to warm them up with a Juicy okay. Lucy, yeah? Yes, we are. If you come to Minnesota and you don't get a Juicy Lucy, you're not doing it right. But rookie move yeah. is people when it comes right out bite right into it can't do that molten lava burn your tongue oh, off oh you don't want to mess up the whole eating experience you with might the get the burn on the first all over your white teeth all over the chest hair okay we don't want that this is this is my question was this a terrible move today wearing a white shirt honestly probably the worst clothing decision <laughs> you could have made but you're gonna thrive but it's gonna be like a challenge soon. right exactly are there usually toppings on a juicy lucy depends on where you are but most standard ones just have like the two patties yeah. with the cheese stuffed in the middle that is like the formula for that's juicy the one lucy. yes which so, it looks like we're oh my god it looks so good what kind of cheese goes on a juicy lucy we're talking american craft single no bullshit when you have the not real American cheese, yeah. it moltens. It's like a juice. Okay. Thus, Thus the juicy Lucy. juicy Lucy. This has been an educational journey so far. Uh, I'm so glad. But I think we should eat these, right? I think so too. Cheers. I don't know how I feel about cheersing food. It's like a Minnesota nice thing. All right, you I'll just... be ni Midwestern nice. Yeah, sure. Okay. Cheers. All right, cool. <laughs> Burger, medium rare. You got that pink center. Mm. You see that? Mm. Look at that. It's a heavy ooze. Oh my god. Yeah, it's really good. This is really good. Has a woman ever made you feel this excited <laughs> in your entire life? On the show, every place, everything we eat mm -hmm. gets a nickname. You get to decide what the nickname of this Juicy Lucy is. I think this is the Longfellow legend. Why is this called the Longfellow legend? Why has it earned this name? So, we are in the Longfellow neighborhood. Okay. One of my favorite neighborhoods here. Okay. And I'm sorry, but do you not think this is legendary? Blue Door, the Longfellow legend. Wow. With Liz. Cheers. Cheers. Mm -hmm. We're at Groveland Tap, and I'm here to eat another Juicy Lucy. Let's see what's going on here. Patty's looking pretty nicely sized. The sear on this is really nice. This is a good looking Juicy Lucy. Here we go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. In theory, I understood where the term Juicy Lucy came from. This is juicy as all hell. Look at that, the cheese is just like, it's not even gooey, it's melty. It's like liquid cheese that's just been soaking into the patty. 
The vibe inside Groveland Tap is, let's say, beer centric. There are tons of tap handles all along the walls, but this seems like truly a burger and a beer joint. The Groveland Tap Juicy Lucy, this is the Mini Haha Juicy Lucy. The Mini Haha set of waterfalls, the only set of waterfalls on the Mississippi River, and they happen to be in Minneapolis. This juice all over the place. The little mini waterfall of cheese. The mini haha -ha Juicy Lucy at the Groveland Tap. We are at the Nook, and I have another friend joining me for this ride. Uh, he's slightly more accomplished than I am, uh, has about 12 seasons of MLB baseball on me, and three All-Star games. Uh, I have neither of those things, zero and zero. Uh, Glenn Perkins. Hi. Hey, Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me down in this basement. Yeah. I understand that you hosted a pretty large-scale party down here? Yeah, we point. had 2014, before the All-Star game, it was the night of the Home Run Derby. I love it here. I mean, this is if, if this thing was across the street from my house, I'd, I think I'd be here every night. Yeah. Upstairs, there's kind of regular-sized restaurant. Then there's a little side staircase that comes downstairs. You have this cool, long, narrow bar filled with dollar bills. There's obviously a bowling alley right next to it. Ski ball machine, little arcade. It's just like everything you wanted in your basement as a third grader with beer. So, Glenn, what makes for a good Juicy Lucy? The thing I like about theirs is there's no frills. This is just like as simple as it gets, like soft bun, just the burger with cheese in it, and crush it. Crush it? Yeah. Well, let's crush them. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, look at that. I mean, that's perfection. Yeah. They don't skimp on the cheese, and the patties are thin. Mm-hmm. They are. It's not like too much meat. So bun-wise, this is what I've been looking for. This bun lets the burger shine. It's simple. It's humble. It contains the cheese and the meat. It's, it's something to grip. Gives yeah, you grip. exactly. I think that I, the cheese is perfect for me. It's melted, but it's not like molten. The Juicy Lucy at the Nook, what's the nickname for this burger? Like, this probably is like a good end of the night burger. A good closer burger. The Nook, this is the closer with a closer. We're at Peppers and Fries, and I am eating another Juicy Lucy. This has cheese on top of it, and in the middle, or so I'm led to believe. That cheese looks like when you see an illustration of a cheeseburger and the cheese is just perfectly melted around the outside. Double cheese going down. Look how pink that burger is. That is a true medium rare. But more importantly, look at that cheese. It doesn't stop. It will not stop. There's so much cheese going on here, and it is, wow, I just wrapped it around the burger like that. It's extremely flavorful, very creamy, but the meat, it's well seasoned enough to support all this cheese. Peppers and fries, this is the bleacher burger. It's a real sports bar vibe in here. This, you wanna eat in the bleachers while you're watching the game. Maybe sub-zero temps. I hear it gets cold in Minnesota in the winter. The bleacher burger. Needed one of these for another one of these. We're at the 5-8 Club, uh, kind of out near the airport, right next to the highway. The Juicy Lucy's are starting to starting to take their toll. My body's realizing what's going on. It's like, dude, too much red meat, too much salt, too much cheese. Eat a salad, but we have more of these to eat. So let's check this one out. Bun's looking real good, soft, not a fancy bun. I think this might be the biggest patty that we've had so far today. Pretty substantial in size. 5-8 for the fifth. Let's do it. It's a very cheesy patty, but it's spread out across that big patty, so you get meat and cheese with each bite. Uh, the salt on this is really nice, not overly salty, but definitely properly seasoned. There is a lot of bun to this patty, though. It's a doughy Juicy Lucy. 
This, the 5'8 Club, this is the Pillsbury Lucy. You know why? Because that little dough boy started right here in Minneapolis. And this is a doughy burger. So when people talk about the history of the Juicy Lucy, its origin story, the name that comes up is Matt's. And that's where we are. You might notice there's two burgers on the table. That's because I have another guest with me, my friend, Brian Merkel. Brian is a bit of a meat guy in Minneapolis. Yeah, I just <laughs> eat meat guy. I feel like it's fitting that I'm eating a burger with a butcher. This is the only Juicy Lucy I will eat in town. Should we just take a look at these guys? Proper meat bun to ratio, as I like to say. What makes a good Juicy Lucy a good Juicy Lucy? I like authenticity, and I think Matt's is the authentic Juicy Lucy. I know that Matt's is using fresh burgers because they're selling like a thousand pounds of them a week, and that's why this is exciting for me here. Let's go for it. Let's eat them. Mm. Oh, that's look sweet, at that. Sweet, gooey satisfaction. Mm. I feel like the fact that you have to slurp the burger tells you something about this burger. That cheese is like perfectly runny. You get the texture from the sear on both sides. Simple textural contrast, Yeah, if you will. I appreciate that. That griddle is tiny. Right. And it's just behind the bar. There's no kitchen. It's sitting right there. Yeah. When you're sitting at the bar drinking your beer, you can hear the sizzle going always. When we walked in here, basically every table was full. Mid-afternoon right. on a Tuesday. It's just one dude. At right. the grill. There's no team, there's no like huge one. assembly line for these. It's one guy just pumping them out. Okay, Brian, what is the nickname for Matt's Juicy Lucy? I think we need to call it the old standby. It's gonna be the same every single time. There's not 50 different cheese options or stuffing it with God knows what. It's just the classic Juicy Lucy, the old standby. Matt's, this is the old standby. It's not gonna change anytime soon. And it definitely doesn't need to. We're in an actual restaurant. And by actual restaurant, I mean a large restaurant. There are many people eating here right now. And this is served on a real plate. We're in Hell's Kitchen right now. The name of the restaurant, not my actual scenario. I've eaten a lot of burgers kind of hellish is how I'm feeling right now. But I'm about to eat this one. Let's check it out. There's a lot going on here. Not just patty and cheese, pickles. We have onions, tomato, and lettuce. Okay, so first thing I noticed about this, the cheese distribution's a little bit off. It's all kind of in the center. There's this pretty thick band around the outside that's just beef. And that also makes it harder for all of the cheese to melt. If there's a big bunch of it in the middle and it's not spread evenly throughout, this is kind of like the opposite of what we had at Matt's. Matt's was the simple burger. This, I think, at Hell's Kitchen, this is the overachiever. Just doing a little too much, pushing it a little bit too far. It's gotta go back to its roots. Go back to the real Juicy Lucy identity. The overachiever. Time for another Juicy Lucy at the 508 Bar and Restaurant. We're in the nice little side patio right now. More fresh air, gotta keep this day moving. I can't be falling asleep. Look at that, there's bacon on this one. We haven't had bacon yet. This looks like a pretty thick patty. We're going like height-wise here. And then there's some pickles and shredders, shredded lettuce on the bottom. I'm ready to eat this, let's do it. Seasoning the beef, pretty good. So far, this is the most nervous I've been with wearing this white shirt, which, again, I think was ill-advised for today. This is also, I think, maybe the biggest burger that we've had so far. There's a lot of meat on here. The bun itself, pretty big. The 508 Juicy Lucy, this is the Twin Cities burger. Two identical slices of bacon, two identical pickles, and there's enough here, probably for two meals. The Twin Cities burger at 508, tasting nice. Last 
juicy Lucy of the day at the Crooked Pint. First appearances, uh, cheese on top. Looks like it's pretty well melted. The meat itself, fairly well seasoned. The bun is exactly how I like the bun. Simple, not trying to prove anything, letting the patty and the cheese take the forefront. This is obviously a messy burger. And you may or may not know this, but the famous cartoonist Charles M. Schultz, the guy who created the peanuts, he's from Minneapolis. So this, in honor of him and the messy situation I'm dealing with right now, is the pig pen. You're gonna be a little dirty after eating this one. Okay, I've definitely eaten enough Juicy Lucy's today. I think I have my top three up here, but just to make sure everything checks out, I'm gonna sleep on it, give it some time, and tell you guys who the champion is tomorrow morning. Cheers. So what are the three best Juicy Lucy's in Minneapolis? Sitting at three is the Groveland Tap. That Juicy Lucy had a beautiful sear on both sides, melty cheese throughout, and you know, I kinda just wanted to sit there and drink beer for the rest of the day. That spot was rad. Sitting at number two, uh, I'm gonna maybe take a little bit of heat for this one, but Matt's, the legendary, the original, the Juicy Lucy that's served from behind the bar, the sear on the outside of that one was fantastic, the cheese is super melty, the bun was humble, and the vibe in there was truly a neighborhood dive bar. I get why everyone says it's number one, but for me, the best Juicy Lucy that's made in the Twin Cities, it's made at the Nook. I was thinking about that burger for the rest of the day after I ate it. The cheese, so melty. The beef, well seasoned and seared. And the bun, simple, soft, wasn't trying to steal the show. Plus, the vibe inside of that place, the next time I'm in the Twin Cities, that's gonna be my first stop. The bar downstairs, the bowling alley, the ski ball, everything I want in a laid back bar, it's at the Nook, including the best Juicy Lucy in town. But that's just my opinion. I wanna hear what you guys think. Did I miss anything? Any of your favorite spots? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for hanging out, and thanks for the Twin Cities for serving up such delicious Juicy Lucy's all day. I'm Alex Delaney. Bon Appetit. For the patty itself, I want a hard sear on both sides. That gives some nice texture. Ooh, a butterfly. <laughs> Hold the butterfly.